Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Christina Kent and I'm an oil painter. Today, I'm gonna do a paint with me video where I go through the process of one of my still life paintings. And I really like still life painting. I think it's a great way to practice a lot of the fundamentals in painting and to explore relationships between color and lighting and shape. Um, so yeah, so I'm really excited to go through this paint with me today. And um, usually my still lifes tend to be kind of quiet and peaceful, focusing on small moments of light. Um, but this one today, we're gonna be painting some really bright tomatoes and it's gonna be all about color. So let's get to it. Okay, so today we're gonna be painting some tomatoes and I'm gonna be painting this on a panel that I've primed with gesso and also some um, of a neutral brown color. And I like to do my paintings on a neutral color rather than bright white, especially when I'm painting something very saturated like these tomatoes. Um, having that neutral background is just really helpful in assessing color relationships. The color that I use to tone the panel is Burnt Sienna and it's a really orangish brown and I like that it has a lot of warmth to it, especially when I'm painting a really bright warm subject like tomatoes and I'm hoping that that warmth is going to come through in the final painting. And here you can see I've sketched in the basic shapes of the tomatoes. It's a pretty simple composition, just these three tomatoes, but I think the thing that makes it more interesting is that we have this really strong, well, the tomatoes have these really strong shadows that are coming from the strong light. It was um, sunlight in the afternoon and it's giving us this really dramatic angle of the shadows on the tomatoes. Once I've sketched the basic shapes, then I go into the block-in stage, which you can see here. And that's just where I try to block in the basic colors that I'm seeing. And here I'm not trying to get all of the nuances in the colors that I'm seeing, but I'm focusing on what are the major color relationships. Like when you squint your eyes, what are the main colors that stand out? And when I block in these colors, I like to start with the darker colors first. I find it especially helpful doing all the Prima painting that is like painting with just wet oil paint. It's a lot easier to start with the dark colors and then bring in the lighter colors. And it's a lot easier to paint a lighter color on top of a darker color. So I find I can sort of correct some of the darker areas with the lighter colors and it's kind of harder to do that vice versa. It's harder to correct lighter areas with darker colors. So you can see here I'm using this lighter kind of cool off-white to carve out um, the shapes of the tomatoes and also of their shadows. And here I'm still focusing on the major relationships. So you can see I've kept it pretty simple. Um, the shadows are mostly one color the tomatoes themselves are one or two colors, and then the, the background is mostly just one color. And once I've gotten that established, then I can start going in and adding details. So what I was really excited about in this painting was really getting to the super bright, really saturated orangey reds that I was seeing in these little cherry tomatoes. And this was really exemplified by the strong afternoon sun. Um, I'm painting from a photo reference, so I took a photo late in the day when the sun was just about to go down and it was um, creating these really dramatic angles. And I, I think it's important to paint from life as well, and I like to do a lot of painting from life, but when I'm getting these really particular moments of sunlight, um, I really like to paint from a photo so that I don't have the time pressure to try to capture everything before um, the sun changes. So you, here you can see I'm going in and I'm really starting to exemplify those bright oranges. I put on like a deeper red first um, to kind of build up a very rich dark base, but then I'm layering these super bright tones on top and um, just really trying to bring out that effect of the sun um, hitting these these tomatoes and causing them to glow. And one thing that I thought was really cool was that um, the tomatoes that were sliced open, the ones that are the ones that are cut in half, um, those are pretty orange. They were glowing like really brightly orange red, 
whereas the one that was whole that's kind of in the top left um, that one was looking a much deeper red but then the sliced one next to it was reflecting against it giving it this nice little orange pop and I just thought that that was really beautiful so I wanted to capture that that's one of the things I really love about still life painting when you think the still life is really simple and um, you kind of are expecting to see one thing but then you forget about how objects interact with each other and how um, they reflect against each other and um, they have kind of this relationship with each other that you might not notice at first glance. And I think it's an effect that's particularly pronounced in situations with really strong lighting, which is one of the reasons why I really like to paint um, in strong afternoon light when the sun is at its brightest and then it maximizes all of these reflections. Another really cool thing I noticed that I am working on here is just the complexity of the shadows. Because while the tomatoes were casting this purpley shadow, um, they're also transparent and so as the sun was shining through them they cast some sort of like red glow in the shadow and then also the tomato on the right the sun reflected off that tomato into the shadow of the tomatoes on the left and um, and so that red was brought into that shadow as well and at this point I'm mostly just refining the painting adding some details um, that I thought were really beautiful and also just trying to think about you know what details are necessary here I think painting and poetry have a lot in common um, and one thing I really like about poetry is just how um, how efficient and thoughtful poets are with their words and I think it should be kind of the same in our paintings um, I think it's important to not have a lot of extra details, but instead uh, simplify things and have a very clear vision with the painting. So with this painting, there were a lot of details with the seeds and a lot of little highlights here and there, um, which I could have painted, but I thought that it was nicer to keep it simple, um, to really just simplify those parts of the image and focus more on these big relationships between the red of the tomatoes, the purple of the shadow, and the white background. And I think it ended up working really well. I think I got a nice balance of detail and simplicity and created a really strong image. For the finishing touches, I added a few very soft, very understated highlights, and I also went back in and retouch some of the red areas with that orangey red color to make sure that it came through. So here's the final result, here's how the painting turned out in the end, and I'm really happy with it. I think it came out really nice and that I was able to capture a lot of just the brightness and vibrancy of the tomatoes um, and made for a really happy painting. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel or let me know in the comments below. Um, I really appreciate hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.